he said the solution is, is uh, not so much by wider streets, but let's get a better plan for the town, which is what has happened here. Um, so he said, welcome to ION. So I'm going to show you just a few things with a little, um, a little bit of a, uh, a, a focus on the mobility issues here in ION. Um, this particular street has a, a kink in it at the end. You never see that in suburbia. You know, they're all smooth and, and uh, or even perfectly straight. That, that little twist at the end of that street slows it down so you won't race into that um, street intersection going too fast. Of course, the buildings are to the back of the sidewalk and the trees and you have parallel parked cars. Parallel parked cars, critical, critical. And uh, we'll talk a, a good bit about that. The welcoming benches. Um, and, and look at the fun you can have in a livable community. This is a, a Huck Finn kind of moment that these guys are having in the lake. These are 10 years ago. These are 10 years ago. Um, you know, this, this guy's probably in college now. <laughs> so, uh, you know, the beautiful porches and, and the, you know, the low country uh, stairs that come up from both sides, one for the men, one for the women. <laughs> That's the way they get started. That was the origin of that double. Of course, there was symmetry also. There was symmetry. And uh, uh, I, I was talking to Vince. When I, was, when I was 12 years old, I'd lived in Europe for six years because my father was in the Air Force. And um, so one, one of the three-year stints we had was at Versailles, south of Paris. So I knew all about stairs like this. And that began to come back when I was listening to these good urban designers. So the porches that you, you know, we know again, after a long spate of amnesia, that if you're going to do residential, it has to be elevated. So you have a sense of privacy, being that close to the street. So you walk out on your porch and somebody's walking by, and Sarah, hello, how are you? you know, and she's down there. Um, and and when, they, when people walk by, uh, they can look through your windows, but they see chandeliers. They don't see what you're, oh, they're having spaghetti tonight, you know, <laughs> looking, looking down at them. But then commercial is just the reverse. You, you want to have your commercial be sidewalk entry um, because that's, that's the convenient way to, you don't want to climb a lot of stairs for commercial. So those, those uh, were tried and true that everybody that was designing in 19, oh, 1910 knew that. And then there was this decline due to the depression and they were all out of business and the, the suburban people came charging back. Um, wonderful, look at that curve in this road. Now that's not absolutely essential, it was put in there on purpose, okay, to keep the speed on that edge down. Um, and, and the roads get much more casual as you go out toward the, uh, the, the, the rural edge. Um, look at this, a, a youngster who again is probably in college, um, is there with a UPS truck, mixing it up. And, uh, and, and, you know, doing a fine job of it because of the low speed. Speed management is critical, and it happens all the time. Um, I'm not sure you're doing this anymore. Um, that edge of that triangle needs to be parked again. That edge right out here next to that street needs to be parallel parked again. Now, I, I understand that somebody like the driver of this van coming up to that was nervous about that. And that's why it's gone. Yes. Here's the solution. This this person in the white van is feeling nervous and I'm saying Yes, you got it right. The drivers have to feel nervous. You have crashes when the drivers are completely comfortable going as fast as they want to go. Okay? And I, I, I know nobody's been killed at this intersection. Okay? There are probably not even any crashes at this intersection of record. So get the car, parked cars out there. The, the, the sight triangles that, that we engineers uh, insist on are one more thing we brought in from the country. We brought it in from the country. 
a high speed, you know, you're out on, on a rural two lane road next to a bunch of feet, uh, pulp wood and cornfields. Uh, you don't want to have a surprise by somebody pulling out uh, in your path because you're going way too fast to stop. But here the secret is if everybody's going 15 or 20, you can stop and nobody gets killed. That's the key difference. Speed of the motor vehicles really, number one is speed of the motor vehicles, number two is the motor vehicle speed, and number three is how fast cars are going. <laughs> That's it. That's a secret. Now you'll love this. This is my, uh, my 10 year old photograph. Look at the tree and, and how thin it is and everything. And then, uh, aha, the church is now here. See, future home of Holy Cross Church. And there it is. And look at the difference in that tree size. Okay. So, uh, and look how wonderfully the church uh, fills in the town center with a civic building right there. Uh, so it's all about creating the place and the transportation must be subordinate to that. The traffic engineers have no right to get out ahead of the urban designers. Zero. Uh, this is a, a great street. It's a great street because it's been allowed to be narrower to protect the pedestrians. <clears throat> Let me move into an, another uh, area, context. Um, we are so inept at describing context or place um, that, that all we have is rural or urban. Uh, when you look at all the Federal Highway Administration uh, regulations and all the important decisions on where to spend money and what, how wide the lane should be, it's either, well, that's, a, that's an urban section or that's a rural section. That's it. And, and obviously there are many more gradations of uh, uh, place that are much more important. Um, and there's a, there's a poor assumption that, that we can speed and be safe if we just get on the large arterials. That's another problem, that, that, that speed is, is safe, safe to travel. And I don't know how they continue to um, perpetrate that, that myth, so to speak, but a lot of people are catching on to it and they're fighting the, the high speeds. Um, and, and they're always administering funds based on this urban and rural mix of, of street types. Um, now the great delegation, um, that's a term we've come up with for the way the transportation system works. Think of the whole system as being a train system where you have locomotives and, uh, and track. And, um, and the, the government at all levels has delegated all of the stuff that has to do with the locomotive to you and you and you, okay? You do the vehicle technology selection. You do the research on color and stereo systems and whatever else you want, convertible or hard top. You do all of that. Uh, if you didn't do it and there, were, there was a train uh, 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 agency or an agency of transportation, they still have to make the vehicle technology research and selection. Very expensive for them. They train their drivers to run transit vehicles. You train yourself. So there's this delegation down to each of us and it goes, it fits in very nicely with that independence that I talked about earlier, this freedom to, I mean, any one of us in here uh, could go get in their cars and drive to Chicago tonight if you wanted to. You wouldn't have to check a schedule or check the fare or anything else. Um, so that's the, uh, that's the seductive nature of the automobile. Um, and, and it's that great delegation down to the individuals. And that has to change to a degree where you want the compact urban places to be. So you, again, we're back to context, determining how you organize the mobility system. Uh, speed kills, I said this a couple times already, and there's an old study we, we, we like to use, we've been using it for 25 years, that said if, if you as a pedestrian are struck by a motor vehicle, unfortunately, if that motor vehicle is going 20 miles an hour, there's only a 5% chance that you'll be a fatality. If the vehicle is going 30, it jumps to over 50, and if it's going 40, yeah, it's 80%, you have a 20% chance of surviving a strike by an automobile.
automobile and it's going 40 miles an hour. So it's an exponential rise uh, and it's just high school physics of force equals mass times acceleration.